Hey, this is Eddie Dixon. I'm here doing For a Song with Adam Fitz. Two. poetic and all this is like a lot of a lot of um, a lot of the movies inside the actual soldiers heads and there's a lot of this poetic stuff about the nature of life and like it's shot beautifully and everything else throughout the whole thing there's a um, Melanesian folk songs which are by this um, it's by a group of people in the Solomon Islands um, and it's it's all pidgin English uh, like church songs that the Christians came and, uh, you know, the priests came and taught these folks um, these uh, chants or whatever, or they adapted original things that they had, but, um, and then put like pidgin English uh, lyrics to it about, you know, Jesus and things like that. And so there's, I made a regular, uh, like that whole collection of songs, but specifically there's a group of like three or four of them that, uh, uh, straight up if like if music can like save a life um, it probably did that a couple times because it's so gorgeous and so I had always been playing uh, the songs just the melodies on the on the guitar and stuff or on the piano if I sat around it and so I went ahead and put <laughs> the you know the the, the Western linchpin, the, the uh, love song, <laughs> and just went ahead and grafted it to two different Melanesian folk songs. The, the, the verse melody is from something called, uh, and this is in Pidgin English, actually, so you can kind of hear a little hints of what the English thing they're getting at, and is Jesus, him holem hand, you know, Jesus, mm -hmm. his holy hand, yeah. belong me. Like is on me, mm -hmm. and then uh, the other one I can't remember the name of. Um, but so the the chorus is one song, and the, the verse is another, and I jammed them together and wrote them about um, uh, somebody I was just kind of nuts over. That only lasted for like a minute, but um, and the recording, the recorded version of it, mm -hmm. that was 
recorded all in a day of um, when she actually had just like cut off all contact the day before. Oh wow. So I was like stewing through this day of like the first day where she'd just been gone. Like just whoof. And uh, so that whole thing, the, the recorded version has some pretty raw, like the vocals are pretty raw. And yeah, like for the, sure. Everything has like a, an edgy, and because it was all during the, which normally that's not what you do. Like when something traumatic happens in your life, uh, it's rare that that's the time you that you work. actually set down the thing. Right, right. More, more likely you, you, you know, you suffer and drink or do whatever you crawl do. Into a hole crawl into a hole. Crawl into a hole. Come out reflective. Months later, yeah. Right. Months later, you look back on it, and the whole, the whole idea of like the, uh, uh, and we, we've talked about this a ton. Like the whole idea of the suffering artist. When you're really in the jam, in the suffering. You <laughs> ain't doing shit. There's not a lot of action. As far as I'm concerned, work like, that's coming out of that moment. Yeah. It could come out reflective wise. Yeah. Or come out as a byproduct yes. of the coping mechanism, right? right? Like somebody would be drinking or abusing. And right. then the, the possibly the byproduct of that could be some kind oh, of reflective yeah. stuff. Yeah, maybe um, the, with the assistance of so the pharmacology. Or you had already written the lyric and you just recorded it that day that um, she cut off ties, or you wrote the lyric that day? Um. No, I'd I'd written it before. Okay, because it's all. I mean, it's it's the whole thing is unrequited love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, like, that's the lyric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the but the uh, a lot of what happened was um, a lot of things that were sort of half finished got plugged in that day. That solidified it. Like, <laughs> yeah. and and the reason that it's uh like the like we talked about the sting on like um, and I can still see her eyes mm -hmm. is absolutely like that was plugged in that day, and there's some other things that were just like of the moment that right. like that hardly ever happens but it really was it was therapy through recording i think it's really interesting now that you know you were talking how like take the western love song yeah. and drop into this which actually like if these were traditional folk songs that then got co-opted and they put jesus into them that's what which that's what western culture was yeah. selling yeah. then like so that the songs that the versions you were listening to were bastardizations of like basically a marketing tool of the of like, Christianity, yeah. yeah, like took took the took the familiar thing, yeah. and then and then plugged in the marketing of and Christianity then, to be like this is the thing, and so like I don't think it's it's too far removed to do the same thing to say like now I'm going to oh, take that same no, thing no. and re the, the, yeah the the swerving back and forth you know out um, Al Green you know Reverend Al Green and the, and the Sam Cooke like the swerving back and forth between you know, religious and whatever, like the, 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 the staple singers, like how they had to to deal with, uh, like with Sam Cooke's, I think his parents, or what, like there was a lot of pushback when these people that were in the gospel area would sort of swing over to this thing. They're like, well, now you, look, you got sin all over yourself. Yeah, look what yeah, you yeah. did, you know? Ray Charles but, too, right? Ray Charles yeah. was like the guy who took took the church and made it secular. Yeah. <laughs> in the, in this song that's, I don't, I don't wanna say it's hopeless, because there's hope in it, but like in this song that's like, it's almost like wishing, mm -hmm. you know, like do you believe that you can like find the person that like award, award your love to the one who, who wants yeah. it the most? Yeah, there is, there is like, can, can I please stop doing this stupid thing? <laughs> and, and uh, you know, it's not a, I don't think anywhere in there it says like, you know, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> like, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, garden and whittle for the rest of my life it, it's actually no i would like to be able to i have love to give i'd like to be able to like give it to the person that like wants it like can i please you know have this this burden of this attachment to somebody that obviously doesn't want it can i like stop eating that meal of glass <laughs> like can can i be released from that but yeah i think there's i think there's hope with all the uh even with all the 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 sort of probably overly, overly like um, brutal imagery, the Hiroshima shadows on the sand and all that other stuff. But that's the way that shit feels when you're there. For sure. That's like, like oh fuck, like this is never, this is never not gonna hurt. This is always gonna hurt just like this. Like, of course not.